Thank you for joining us, Ailesh. As a market leader in solution-based applications, Compulex focus is on IT solutions for businesses. How has the uptake been in the market considering the rampant competition? Uh, as much as there is competition, we have our own niche. We have been in this business for 18 years, and uh, that uh, definitely uh, adds to our credibility. We are a credible player in the market. We've seen ups and downs. Uh, as a company ourselves, as the market has grown, gone down, gone up, we've seen several elections, and around every election there is, there is some kind of uh, uh, business drop. So we've gone through several cycles, and, uh, uh, and our credibility is, is, is one aspect. We have been continually delivering quality solutions to our customers, and 80% uh, of our business comes as repeat business from, from our existing customers. That in itself means that we have a long-term engagement with our customers, our customers believe in us, and they uh, uh, like what we do for them. You launched the first smart card loyalty program in Africa for Nakumat. Another retail source gradually adopted the same. How defining was this innovation for you and for the retail sector at large? See, when we started this loyalty program uh, uh, on a smart card platform, uh, the challenge we had at that time was connectivity was not so easily available. So uh, the option for us was to have an, a secure offline platform where I, I, I get my points awarded on a card securely and then when I go from one shop to the other, I go with the points instead of the, the, the shops having to connect to a central server to see what is my points balance. So that way that technology, the, we, we had a technology challenge in terms of connectivity and we mitigated that challenge with, with a new technology innovation called smart cards. So, so it, and, and, and it's really worked. And uh, uh, what has happened is, uh, since we started the first program with, with Nakumat, uh, a lot of our, other, our own other customers, retail customers, took up to that program and said, we'll also go for smart card, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, customer loyalty in itself is, is a humongous subject. I mean, if, if you look at the way the world is, uh, is looking at loyalty, they really want to have a very good visibility of the customer's behavior pattern. It's a big science by itself, you know. And, uh, and technology comes in very handy to give extremely uh, micro level visibility of what is the customer buying every time he comes, what is, his, what is his favorite product, and how can I give more value to my customer and keep that customer experience and engagement more real and more personal. And that's how loyalty programs have, have been, have been a, a very, very key driver for a lot of retailers in this market. Complex started back in 1994 and has grown to have about six offices across the world. In terms of ICT uptake, how does Kenya compare to these other regions? Kenya is becoming a, a, a formidable player in the global ICT space. I mean, if you look at the amount of innovations that are coming out of Kenya, I mean, uh, I, I, it's, it, it's become a cliche, but m -Pesa, for example, it's a humongous innovation which has been globally acclaimed, and it came from Kenya, and that actually gave Kenya a spot on the world map as far as ICT is concerned. So that has really opened up, and people are saying, oh, and, oh Kenya, oh, m -Pesa. Now, if Kenya can produce m -Pesa, Kenya can produce core retail. Kenya can produce NGO solution from Compulinks, you know what I mean? So, so that has really made our life easy as we, as we go across borders. And uh, Kenya is very well positioned. Uh, we all know that the likes of IBM, for example, has set up global uh, Africa headquarters in, in Nairobi. Uh, Google is, is very, very uh, uh, present here in Kenya. They, they've got a good amount of presence. So all these bigger boys coming in, set up a, setting up an office here, setting up a formidably large operation in, in Nairobi gives us a big endorsement by itself, you know. One of the key challenges with ICT and innovation is the issue of system and electronic fraud. As an expert in this field, how do you think this should be best addressed? See, what we are doing as an organization, we recognize this, and we've done our own little innovation within uh, with the applications that we are offering in the market. For example, in the retail market, we are uh, all our products are biometric enabled. So now you don't use passwords. If you want to log into a program, you will put your finger. If you want to authorize a discount or authorize a price reduction, uh, you will go and put your finger. So you take responsibility for having authorized it. Uh, so that has really helped us in eliminating retail fraud. Uh, when it comes to banking, for example, we have uh, developed a uh, customer identification solution, uh, which again uses biometric technology. Uh, and uh, that way we are able to ensure that banks do not end up 
with ghost loan uh, customers. So you see, until now, biometric was perceived as a technology being used by law enforcement agencies and, and really the government. But in the commercial sector, the uptake of biometric technology was not so good. But, uh, but with the kind of application that we are developing, our customers are embracing this and they're seeing a big benefit, a, a good elimination of fraud, a good amount of elimination is happening. Now, plans for development of Kenya's Technopolis Consul City are well underway. Now, on actualization, this will see Kenya edge towards becoming an ICT-based economy. Now, what do you think should be done to sort of fast track this process? I think uh, uh, one is to, uh, now that the government has, has some kind of a structure around how they want to uh, get the process started, I think it's a good start. And uh, uh, I believe if you dream big, you can do big, right? So uh, the, the first step is over. We've, we've dreamt big. Uh, the, the, uh, the implementation, I think if we, if we say that we're going to go big bang, and we, we are going to do the whole thing in, in on day one, it'll never happen. So if it can be uh, uh, still fragmented into smaller executable pieces, I mean, there is, yes, there is a phase one, but within the phase one, if there can be point one, point two, point three, point four, uh, which will then graduate into the full phase one, uh, then it is easier to choose smaller pieces, uh, because right now, phase one in itself, as much as it is a smaller piece of the entire bigger picture, phase one in itself is large, is humongous. So it needs to be broken down into logically executable phases. And finally, Sailesh, what's your outlook towards development of Kenya's ICT sector and its contribution to the economy? See, if you look at the Vision 2030, ICT in itself is, is a pillar by itself. Now, that is a big step for the government to, one, recognize ICT as, as a humongous player or, or a big contributor. To, to the to the company's vision 20 to the country's vision 2030 is is a big thing and uh, the government is really uh, working hard uh, towards uh, actualizing vision 2030 I mean it's it's all about execution and the good thing they're doing right now in the ICT piece for example they are having dialogue with companies like us for example uh, uh, and they are taking our inputs as to what does it take to execute the vision 2030. And the good thing is, you know, they have the medium-term plans, which are broken down into five-year plans, which makes it easier to execute, easier to monitor, easier to visualize. Uh, so uh, 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 ICT is going to be a big player, and, and it already is. Uh, and it can only become better as we go forward. Mm -hmm.